Okay, so this video is about option C, freshwater IV geo, and it's the formation of typical river landforms, including waterfalls, floodplains, meanders, le levees, and deltas. So first of all, um, waterfalls. So this is from my notes, so it's a bit blurry, but it was just like the easiest way I could explain it. So, okay, let's go step by step. So you have here a cliff, um, like of rock and basically you have more resistant rock on top on the top layer followed by kind of less resistant rock underneath it and basically the water is flowing like this okay so the water will keep flowing but then over time because this is less resistant to you know like the force of the water and erosion this tends to become eroded um so it's eroded and it keeps eroding and then we come to this stage so basically here this has eroded so much to the point where it's formed a plunge pool and it keeps eroding and then this kind of starts to cave in and then the more resistant rock here like the hard rock kind of becomes um it starts to like jolt out is that the word jolt like it just starts to like stick out and this is called the overhang and then here we have all this process of like abrasion hydraulic erosion just like deepening the plunge pool even more and then we move on to this stage in which the overhang actually falls into the plunge pool as we can see here these rocks and then we have more abrasion we have cavitation which was in the last video um and yeah so the plunge pool just keeps getting bigger and basically this keeps retreating backwards and actually begins to form a gorge um so yeah that's how a waterfall is formed and if you look up videos of it it is like also very helpful because you can see kind of the steps in a bit more of like a live way okay now we're gonna look at floodplains and levees so um levees okay so basically levees form when a flood occurs so before a flood we have just the normal river channel bed and banks then during the flood the um, water level goes kind of above bankful discharge so it's like above the maximum capacity basically and in that um event basically the sediment that's in the river is actually deposited on the banks of the river so actually the thickest and coarser sediments are deposited first and then the thin and fine sediments are deposited a bit afterwards and then as it keeps flooding over time then these natural levees eventually build up so it creates these like levees that like this is basically this on a larger scale and then that like forms the floodplain okay um, and then that also basically creates a protection for when it floods again and again you have this like natural embankment to kind of protect the area of the floodplain from the bankful discharge okay now we're going to look at meanders so i'm going to go step by step again this is from my notes um so i'm going to use this am i going to use that no i'm not i don't know what I'm gonna... okay i'm just going to explain it and then try to link it to these images because i don't have like a full-on thing so basically let's just imagine that this step one river is just a river so basically in that river a disturbance in the river creates an uneven channel so the flow of water is like it it varies within the channel so there are parts that are slow and parts that are fast pools and riffles so basically a pool is like maybe somewhere in the river that looks a bit stagnant and riffles are like turbulent waters but they're all in the same kind of zone then that obviously creates inconsistencies and then at the um at the riffles the hydraulic radius reduces so it becomes less inefficient and then at the pools they actually increase and therefore the river flows faster in the pools and slower over the riffles um, but it is more turbulent at the riffles. So just this idea of an uneven flow creating different speeds of water in the channel. And this hasn't formed yet. It's just one channel, like a relatively straight channel. But then this causes the thalweg to swing from to side to side. 
and then, then that erodes on one side of the river and deposits on the other. So then this is how this like sinuous sinuosity begins to form because you have the straight river but then one part starts to get eroded faster than another and then it keeps going and going and going until you get this like sinuous or curved um, shape of the river um, like a bend and basically that creates a concave bank on the outside and a convex bank on the inside of the meander so you have the river cliff and the slip off slope and then that results in helicoidal flow where the river carries sediment from the outside of the meander and deposits it on the inside um, so basically on the slip off slope you get a lot of deposition whereas the river cliff you get a lot of erosion and this is self-perpetuating and the meander migrates across and down the floodplain so this keeps narrowing um, and narrowing and becoming more sinuous and then you get this meander neck that actually eventually joins up and then you get this um, increase in velocity here because obviously the flow is straight rather than having to go around this relatively inefficient curve um, and then eventually after quite a uh, well the time can vary but after some time um, this just becomes so like the velocity is so high that water kind of tends to um, reduce flowing in the like meander neck and the meander so then that kind of dries up and then you get this oxbow lake formation um okay and this is a more detailed diagram of like the river cliff and the slip off slope um so here we have fast current we have lateral erosion then here we have dep deposition and a slower current and then here again we have the velocity which is much faster at the river cliff and like much lower towards the slip off slope okay and now we have a delta so let's go step by step so first of all sediment is transported by the river and also this um as if you do if you might if you what like okay basically deltas form at the mouth of, yeah at the mouth okay oh my gosh at the mouth of the river so at the mouth of the river there's sediment that is transported by the river and then basically this um, delta begins to grow because of the sediment being deposited and the largest particles are deposited first similar to in the formation of a levee and then the finer sediments and then that creates this like new land here and the sediment carried by the river is also known as alluvium and this alluvium is actually very like rich a rich source of fertile um like soil for agriculture so deltas are often areas of agriculture such as on the nile and so as the river reaches the sea it begins to lose energy and slows down and then because of this lose loss of energy it has to deposit the material and that kind of gets it deposited relatively randomly so then distributaries start to form which are like little streams like these um in the delta um yeah and there's also a term called flo flocculation which is where clay particles stick together and they become heavier and are therefore deposited and this often occurs at the deltas or the mouth of the river um, and deposition also tends to occur along the distributaries and it just builds up over time and there are also different types of delta so you have an arcuate delta which is kind of shaped like an arc here you have a cuspid delta which has this kind of triangular looking shape and then you have a bird's foot delta which is like meant to look like a bird's foot basically 